Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss further into parametric equations and now look at further at the laboratory project, which I was covering in my earlier videos, and continue and look at the project running circles around circles, part five. And make sure to watch my earlier videos, part one, uh, one to four. And to quickly recap, in uh, question one or part one, I showed that a hypocycloid, I derived the parametric equations for it, and it's when you have a circle inside of another circle, like this, this uh, pink one here, and it rotates inside the circle, then you have a shape traced by this point on the inside circle, like that. So you get a shape looks like something like that, uh, being traced, and it rotates around it. And then these were the differential, I mean the uh, parametric equations that I derived for part one, and then one over part two and three and four, and then basically part five is what I'll do in this video, which states if the circle C, which was uh, that pink one here, but instead of being on the inside, it uh, ro uh, the circle rolls on the outside of the fixed circle. The curve traced by traced out by P is called an epicycloid or epic cycloid. That's what I I like calling it. So this one's an epicycloid, and then we're asked to find a parametric equations for the epicycloid. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be instead rotating around the outside. If you rotate inside, you get a hypocycloid. And I've uh, covered those uh, hypocycloids in earlier videos on parts one to four. So make sure to watch those. Some really amazing graphs from those. So now let's look at question five. And here I have a link to a Wikipedia page for epic cycloid. An animation of an epicycloid is shown, and you could see it. It's quite amazing. Just to just to get you an idea of how it's traced. So it rotates on the outside, a small or whatever side circle rotates around the circle, and you get a shape that looks like that. That's pretty cool. This one looks like a flower, kind of. So anyways, that's the kind of shapes, uh, that's how it's graphed. So let's uh, now derive this. So first thing we're going to do, just like in part one where I derived for the uh, hypocycloid, we're going to draw the x and y axis. And I'll draw this uh, big one like this, x and this one y. And what we'll do is draw a circle like this, so yeah, this is a circle here. Uh, let's just draw it a better circle than this, like that. And and let's say the radius is A. And now what we have is the starting point here. Let's start at A0, and the, this is just a radius. Let's assume it's a circle. I'll draw this one more time better. Okay, so this one's slightly better. So now that we have this, what I'm gonna do next is, well, let's draw an angle like this, uh, and we'll call this theta. So this is our theta or a parameter, and then we'll have a circle around this like that. Yeah, actually, I'll draw this a bit bigger just to make it easier to deal with. So we have a shape like that, and now what we get is, well, this is, let's say the center's here, and let's say it started off at this point A0, and it's rotating around this way. So what we'll end up getting is, well, the point P, if it started off here, uh, and then recall that if you have this curve, since it never leaves the outer, uh, I mean, never leaves this fixed circle, the distance that the point travels has to be the exact same as this arc length, as I've explained earlier. So this one's roughly around somewhere here. Let's just say like that. So then this has a uh, has a radius b like that, and this is our point p. Yeah, so this is what we have, and it's uh, assuming it never leaves the fixed circle. This means again. Like I've explained before, this arc length here, and recall definition of arc length, also from uh, part one, you can see that this is going to be the radius times it by uh, yeah, the radius times it by uh, the angle. This one, this full arc length is going to be uh, theta a or a theta. I'll just write this a theta like that. And but then around this one, we're going to have a different angle. This one's going to be well, we'll call this. Uh, like that, and this angle, yeah, that's gamma, the Greek symbol gamma. So then this length right here is also going to be, uh, this is the same arc length, so this is, this is the exact same one. So this is a theta, but now it's the same thing as writing, well, uh, uh, this one now b times this other angle, because this is also by definition of the arc length like that. So now we have length of this, and we'll get to that in a bit. And now the uh, whole idea what we're trying to do is derive parametric equations for the coordinates of this uh, point P, 
which is going to be at an x like that, and then at the y is going to be somewhere here. Like that. So it has coordinates x, y. So to do that, what we could do is just, well, basic trigonometry. We're going to have to add for the x coordinate. What I'll do is I'll just erase this point here. And I'll draw a line across here. So we could determine this using trigonometry. So at this distance across from here to here, I'm going to write this as, well, qx, just a distance like that. And for just put these absolute value signs around it. And that's for sim symboling the x coordinate of the point q. That's from here to here. And we'll call the center of this outer circle q. And now the y of it is going to be, well, this distance. This is just going to be like this, this full length. This is getting a bit messy. This is qy, like that. And then the hypotenuse of this, well, that's going to be, this is a. That's just a radius. And the inner radius here is b. So the hypotenuse is a plus b, like that. So this is just a plus b. So and then basically by trigonometry, we know that sine, I'll write it over here, sine of this theta. Now we have a triangle with theta, a right angle triangle with theta as the angle. So sine theta is equal to, this is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is qy. And then over hypotenuse is just a plus b, like that. And then the uh, and then when uh, the adjacent of it, or I mean, or the cosine of it is going to be like this. And then from this, we could solve for qy. So we can solve this distance. And then for uh, qx, we just write, well, cosine theta is equal to. And now we have the qx. So adjacent over hypotenuse a plus b. So this means we could solve the distance from here to here. And the next thing we need to do is solve the distance from here to here. And we can do that by, well, using trigonometry again, setting up another right angle triangle, set up one over here. And then this is a triangle like that, where if we call this point right here, I'll just draw this actually uh, undashed like that. Yeah, so we have a, let's, a triangle like this. And now at this point, I'll now call this one T. And then what we have is, well, we have an angle inside here, and I'll call this alpha, by this Greek symbol alpha. And now this is a horizontal line across, like that, what I'm doing. And this is just parallel with this. So that means this angle, this is just our theta. So we have this just extended past. So we have a point over here. Now this length here is going to be, well, we'll call this TP. Actually, I'll just uh, put an arrow like this, just because it's hard to see. This is going to be T p like that. And then this one here, we'll call this, uh, this length, uh, this is going to be t q. So distance from there to there. So now we have a, a triangle like that. And what we could do is set up uh, trig equations again for this. This is the sine of this angle. This is actually alpha. So the sine of this angle alpha is going to be uh, equals to opposite, which is t over uh, t p like this. So distance TP, I'll move this around. So distance TP over now the hypotenuse, which is B, which is the radius of the inner circle, or the outer circle. And now the cosine of this cosine alpha is going to be, well, TQ, like that, over B, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So now these distances we can, uh, well, solve by just, well, moving the B on this side. And now we have the distances. So the x coordinate is going to be the addition of QX and tp, actually no, the qx and tq, so this, this horizontal distance. And then the y coordinate is going to be the subtraction from, uh, this is qy, this full length across, or this qy, then subtracted by this tp distance, which is across here. This distance here is going to be absolute value of tp, like that. And then this distance across here, which is we're going to add, this is our absolute value of uh, TQ, or yes, right, TQ like that. Yeah, so as you can see, we just simply add those. And now that these alpha and this uh, other one, gamma, we can solve these angles. And the way to solve those is, well, we know that this A theta equals to B uh, gamma because the arc lengths are the same. So I'll just write that for more clarification. So recall uh, from my earlier video, I'll put the link below that the arc length 
is going to be equal to well the radius of that uh, segment times it by well the angle of that arc and so then we have that and in, in our case we have so these ones are identical because the circle never leaves it so this point P is just traced along it's just rotating and rotates the same distance across on this both sides so that means in our case we have a theta equals to the arc length on the small circle and the arc length the biggest circle is the same a theta equals to gamma times it by b or b gamma just for make it the same and now we could divide this b out move it over so we get gamma is equal to a over b theta and now we could well solve uh, this gamma i mean this alpha from this because notice the this is a full line across that represents 180 degrees so if we recall so recall if we had, let's say, uh, a straight line like this, I'll try to make it the same shape. This angle across, this is, well, this is 180 degrees, or it's just pi radians. This is in radians like that, So or pi radians. And then in our case, what we end up having is, well, we have a horizontal line where it has theta like that, and now we have the other line at the, at the point P, where this angle is our alpha, and then we have over here is our gamma. So we know theta, we know gamma, and well, theta is just given, and we know uh, gamma in terms of theta. Now we just need to solve this one. So this full length is 180 degrees, so we have pi radians, we deal with radians, equals to gamma plus theta plus, and now we have this uh, alpha like that. And now we could plug this inside over here. So what we get is pi is equal to a over b, and now we have uh, theta plus theta plus gamma, and we can simplify this further by taking the theta out. So now we have an a over b plus one, let's factor it out. And what I'll do next is multiply this by b over b, so we have the same common denominator. So now we have a plus alpha there, make it neater. And now what we'll do is, yeah, factor it out, we get now well, theta, and now we have this a plus b over b, like that, plus alpha. And now we bring this down, this is just our pi. So now we could uh, move this all to the left side. So what we end up getting is alpha is equal to pi minus, now we have this, and I'll just write this a plus b over b, and theta, like that. Or I'll just put this around here. So now that we have this angle, we can now apply that to our trigonomic uh, triangles and solve this a bit messy, but hopefully you follow it along uh, a bit slowly if you need to. Yeah, so thus what we have now is, well, our x-coordinate is going to be, our x-coordinate is the x-coordinate of the q, so qx plus now we have tq, which is this inner horizontal distance of the small triangle. So now we have qx like that plus tq, this equals 2, and now this one here is, well, this is, uh, we could just rearrange this part, our qx, now we have a plus b cosine theta, and then for the tq, we have it here, we could move the b on this side, b cosine alpha, so a plus b cosine theta, plus now we have b and cosine alpha, where alpha goes into here, this is going to be, well, pi minus, and I'll just write this as a plus b over b theta, like that. So just a fraction, and then theta, like that. So that's what we have over there. And now, uh, and I'll simplify this in a bit, but now for the y coordinate, now we have the y coordinate of this qy, but now we subtract tp, and that's because, as you can see over here, the full distance from here to here, is our qy, now we subtract this tp distance, which is well solved here, this is b sine alpha, and then the qy is sine theta times it by, move this a plus b on this side, a plus b times sine theta. So now we're dealing with sine, this is similar to my part one video, so now we have a plus b, and now we write sine theta, and then we subtract it by, b sine, and then the sine alpha, 
uh, we just throw that in here sine alpha is just pi minus a plus b over b uh, theta like that and now we could simplify this further if we uh, well recall or note if we were dealing with a uh, yeah dealing with the 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 angle let's say we had an angle like this if you just recall some trigonometry this is this angle here if, if we call this uh, theta this angle here is again going to be well the full 180 degrees or pi minus theta like this and if we draw the triangle basically in this we have a right angle triangle by definition what we end up having is positives on this side now we have negative adjacent here and then opposite is going to be well plus it's up up is plus here and then right is plus this is going to be opposite OP and we have negative adjacent hypotenuse is always positive so then from here the sine of this the sine of pi over theta this equals to opposite over adjacent which we end up having as well a positive OP opposite over I mean opposite over hypotenuse now we have this is the exact same thing as sine theta so that means we could just remove this pi and we just have our uh, this term here which is our, actually our alpha so now for the cosine uh, we have or I'll just write instead of note recall and I went over my early video on proof for sine I don't think I did it for uh, cosine but it's a pretty easy one same thing cosine we're going to look at adjacent so pi minus uh, theta adjacent is going to be negative a over hypotenuse like that and negative uh, adjacent number uh, the by definition cosine is just adjacent over hypotenuse the positive so this means we have a negative cosine uh, theta like that so that means we could remove this this one's going to be negative uh, b cosine and then this uh, pi removes this pi negative here removes and we're left with our angle theta, uh, alpha in that case this one is uh, just theta if we have it like that so actually instead of using theta I'll just write this as uh, psi I think that's like or phi I think that's how you call it so just to not get confused we'll just use this angle for this one here so in, in our case uh, we're dealing with so in our case this angle is is uh, this one above that is our equivalent and yeah this angle is uh, psi like that that's how you call it just like that Gundam style by that guy named psi I, I think something like that anyways so we have that now we could well simplify this thus what we end up having is a hypocycloid I mean uh, not a hypo an epic cycloid or epicycloid so thus x is equal to a plus b cosine uh, cosine theta and then we have a minus because this is uh, when we have pi minus an angle what we end up having is negative of that cosine uh, angle but for a sine is the exact same thing so for the top we're gonna have negative b cosine and now our angle is our alpha which is a plus b over b theta that's the, like that and then our y is going to be a plus b sine theta minus b sine and then nothing changes besides the pi minus removes so now we have an a plus b over b multiplied that fraction by uh, theta like that and there is our uh, our parametric equations and this is for an epic cycloid or epicycloid I like calling it epic cycloid like that it's pretty cool so this one's uh, similar to our yeah similar to the hypocycloid and I'll show you that above in a bit so anyways that's all for today oops is summed up by up here but yeah that's all for today if you enjoyed and here's uh, just to compare with the hypocycloid when you rotate the circle inside uh, the outer inside the outer circle as opposed to on uh, rotating on the outside for epicycle so you can see here instead of a plus we have a, mi a minus b now we have a minus b over b and there's a plus sign there it's, that's pretty much the only differences here so instead in ours we're dealing with a plus b over b and then a plus b and then everything's a minus anyways that's all for today of you uh, learn and enjoyed uh, learning about, about this epicycloid is pretty cool uh, derivation. Hopefully you follow along. It's a bit messy, but uh, yeah, hopefully you you stuck along. It's pretty interesting. Anyways, uh, that's all for today. If you learn and like always, you could download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.